curtains are going bump in the night are rubbish. Well, I'll tell you a story that'll make your funnel quiver, Rusty said. A long time ago, a little engine was returning home. It was a misty, moonlit night. As the engine crossed the old iron bridge, he suddenly lost control and plunged over the side into the swamps below. He was never found again. But many a workman will tell you that when the moon is full, they have seen the little engine trying to get home, but he never reaches the other side. So what do you think of that, Duncan? Pa, nonsense, replied Duncan, and he puffed away. Never mind him, Peter Sam. He'd be frightened if he really saw a ghost. This gave Peter Sam's driver an idea. Let's play a trick on Duncan. The next day, he spoke to Duncan's driver and fireman, who agreed. We'll do it tonight, they said. Duncan had to take coal trucks to the slate mines and then bring slate trucks back. Duncan's driver decided as part of the plan to cross the old iron bridge. Haunted bridge, pa, snorted Duncan. It's as tame as a pet rabbit. But all the same, he kept thinking about Rusty's story. When dusk fell, he was keen to leave. If we don't go now, Scarlow will take my favourite place in the sheds. We can't go back until we've collected all the trucks, his driver replied. He could see their plan was working because Duncan was nervous. When night fell, they set off. The moon was full and the mists were rising around the old iron bridge. Duncan whistled and the sound echoed everywhere. Then ahead, he saw flickering lights. His driver knew they were only little insects that shine brightly at night, but to Duncan, they looked like an engine. Next, his driver secretly threw a rock from the cab into the ravine below. It's the ghost! Take me back! Take me back, please! When Duncan reached the safety of his shed, he closed his eyes tightly. Spooked, are you, Duncan? laughed his driver. No, wailed Duncan. I'm asleep! And refused to open his eyes. He did, though, when he thought his driver wasn't looking, just to make sure that he was still there. Gordon was the first to see Harold. Carol thinks he can go faster than me. I'll show him. Next, it was Henry's turn. The Fat Controller has chosen Harold because he thinks he's more important than me. Well, he's not. Harold can't fly through tunnels. Percy stopped by a signal on his branch line near a field where sheep were grazing. Harold hovered for a while, then buzzed away. I know what he's doing, said Percy. He's counting sheep. And he puffed along his line, feeling much better about things. That evening, the engines talked about the situation. Harold wants to get rid of us, said Gordon grimly. He doesn't need tunnels, added Henry. Don't worry, he's just counting sheep, said Percy. Counting sheep? Pa! snorted Gordon. He's counting how many engines he can get rid of. He'll see how useful I am tomorrow. Thomas wanted to mention the children's playground, but solving the mystery of Harold and the special visitor came first. The next day, Gordon was travelling to collect his train. We'll show that whirly bird just how fast you can go, Gordon, said his driver. Because they were watching Harold, they missed a signal and went onto the wrong line. Gordon was travelling to trouble. Ahead was a tunnel under repair. His driver reduced steam and braked hard. But it was too late. 
Later, Thomas pulled Gordon clear with the breakdown train. The fat controller spoke severely to Gordon's driver about the accident. Will Gordon be scrapped, sir? asked Thomas sadly. What makes you think that? said the fat controller. Thomas decided to pluck up courage. Because the engines think the special visitor is here to see if we can be replaced by Harold, he replied. The fat controller laughed. Ho, oh, oh. ho. Well, the engines are wrong and you shouldn't listen to rumours, Thomas. This gentleman is making a new playground for the children. It was easier to find a suitable site from up in the air. And what's more, said the special visitor, that tunnel sand will be perfect for the playground. Found by accident and rumour, you might say. The Fat Controller still uses Harold to fly above the island. But all the engines know that Harold isn't spying on them. He is, in his way, just being very useful. Something very strange is happening, said his driver. I think it's best we go back. So do I, agreed Henry. By morning, the mist had cleared. A workman was talking about the unsafe viaduct. Lucky you didn't cross it last night. Yes, but we don't know who warned us, replied Henry's driver. Later that day, he spoke to Henry. The viaduct has been repaired. We can take our train back along the old line tonight. Henry didn't really want to. But when nightfall came, he was sizzling nicely. Suddenly, an owl hooted, and then Gordon thundered by. Oh, look! Henry's spooked, said a truck, and the others giggled in their silly way. Be quiet, snapped Henry. I'm not scared. But he was. A little later, the fog came down. As they approached the same area, they saw the amber light again. Here we go, said Henry's driver. Then, unbeknown to Henry, the gates mysteriously closed by themselves, and the signal went red. The trucks had seen all, and they were spooked too. Faster, faster, there's a ghost about. Stop! Stop! yelled Henry. A mysterious figure watched Henry go by. Ahead was a landslide blocking the line. Henry braked hard, but the trucks hit some of the rubble and plunged into the ravine. Just then, Henry's driver saw a strange sight coming towards him. What's that? he said. The fireman laughed. That's our ghost. It's old Bailey the fogman. Old Bailey was very cross. I tried to warn you about that viaduct. Why didn't you pay attention? We're sorry we ignored your warnings, replied the driver. Is there anything we can do to thank you? I'd like to operate that old station again, if you let me. I promise I won't spook Henry. And in a little while, Old Bailey's wish was granted. You and your station will be really useful, said the Fat Controller. Let's hear a hearty thank you to the friendliest, er, uh, ghost on the island. Everyone cheered, especially Henry, who was the happiest of all. I have to attend my wife's birthday party, and I cannot be late. Please give me a lift. I'll try, sir. But Caroline didn't like going fast. I'm hot. My engine will overheat. And it did. Told you so, said Caroline sadly. Bother, bother. Then he heard a loud whistle. It was George the steamroller. George was cross when he saw Caroline. Call yourself a car, you're a disgrace to the road. Find yourself a scrapyard. Caroline spluttered in fury. George's driver was more polite. Can I be of assistance, sir? Only if you can get me to my wife's birthday party, sighed the fat controller. We can take you to Thomas, replied the driver. He's just down the line. Much obliged. 
and they rumbled away. What about me? Wailed Caroline. I'll send for help, called the fat controller. Stay there. That's all I can do. George was enjoying rolling along the lane, but not the fat controller. Oil splashed everywhere. Worse was to follow. Help! cried George. Something snapped! He veered out of control and the fat controller landed in a muddy ditch close to where Thomas was taking on water. Bother! Bother! Thomas had never seen the fat controller in such a mess. Can I help you, sir? asked Thomas's driver. Yes, please. Get me to the station as fast as you can. I'm afraid our fireman's been taken ill. Then I'll be your fireman, sighed the fat controller. Thomas was excited. The fat controller had to work hard. Coal dust and smut flew everywhere. And at last they reached the station. The fat controller looked at the clock. Just in time, he gasped. He hurriedly picked up a huge bunch of flowers. Good luck, called Thomas. The fat controller's wife was waiting for him. As the clock struck three, there stood Sir Topham Hatt. Tired but triumphant, he gave his wife the flowers. Well, thank you, my dear. I knew this was a special birthday party, but I didn't know it was fancy dress. Everyone laughed, and then the party began.